Hello colleagues, uh, today I will be talking about inverse and non-inverse architecture. The difference uh, between IA inverse architecture and non-IA non-inverse architecture is uh, in the emitting beacon. So for example, this is very, very typical configuration for our starter set, which is the smallest configuration for 3D tracking. The configuration consists of four stationary beacons, one mobile beacon and one modem. So from this perspective, both ER, IA, and NIA, and IA uh, are the same. Uh, but there is a big difference. Uh, the difference between IA and uh, ER and NIA is who is emitting ultrasound. Let me one more time stress that in terms of radio, all beacons and the modem are and emitting and transmitting. So when I will be talking about emitting or not emitting and not meshing ultrasound, it's always referring to ultrasound. Uh, also another aspect before I'm going to deep to ultrasound is that uh, beacons don't talk to each other over radio. They all talk to the modem. So we have star architecture, at least at the moment. Uh, so back to ultrasound. So in non-inverse architecture, their mobile beacon is emitting ultrasound and the station beacons are receiving ultrasound. This is happening in the mode when uh, it's already tracking, when the, the map of station beacons is built. Uh, at the same time, when uh, there's an initial stage, so the map is being built, then the modem is controlling each of these uh, beacons and uh, they can emit ultrasound. For example, this is emitting ultrasound this is receiving ultrasound, and then the distance between them is measured. And the modem is collecting their uh, table of distances in order to build or self-build the map of station and beacons. So it means that even in non-inverse architecture, the station beacons may emit ultrasound if you are using, for example, beacons hardware version 4.9 or super beacons. At the same time, you could use uh, mini RXs like this one. So mini RX cannot emit ultrasound. So in this case, for non-inverse architecture, you would need to uh, provide uh, their distances between the station beacons manually or provide location of the station beacons manually. Uh, because this is RX only, so only receiving, not able to transmit anything. Uh, but it's smaller uh, and so let's say as versatile, uh, as uh, let's say sensitive in terms of ultrasound as super beacons, but slightly uh, less expensive. So back uh, to non-inverse versus inverse. So in uh, non-inverse architecture, this is emitting ultrasound and station beacons are receiving ultrasound. They all work at the same frequency. So usually 31 kilohertz. Uh, at the same time, in inverse architecture, which I would say around 10 times more complex in terms of internal structure, uh, stationary beacons are emitting ultrasound and the uh, mobile beacon is receiving. And from this is coming the greatest benefit of inverse architecture because you can, you can have many receiving beacons, many mobile beacons without location update rate reduction. It's like in real GPS. In your GPS satellites are emitting radio and your receiver is receiving radio pulses from all those beacons. And you may have millions of receiver uh, receiving beacons. The same in, in, in inverse architecture. You may have many uh, mobile beacons without location update rate reduction. In both cases, IA and NIA, so EIA and NIA, we support 250 beacons. Beacons means combined, stationary and mobile in both cases. But the difference uh, between inverse architecture and non-inverse architecture particularly is in location update rate. So it means that if you take a non-inverse architecture that at any given moment you are able to locate only one mobile beacon. So when you have one drone flying on the warehouse, that's great because you have only one drone and location update rate per drone and per system is the same. 8 hertz, 10 hertz, 12 hertz, around that value. But if you have 10 drones, then 
you would be able to, at this location update, measure position of one drone, then another drone, then third drone, then tenth drone, and then the first one. So it means that if you have location update per system 10 hertz, then per drone it will be only one hertz in non-inverse architecture. At the same time, in inverse architecture, if I have a person and the person is being tracked, for example, with uh, uh, mini RXs or with badge or with helmet, then you have many persons at the same time because these beacons will be emitting at the same time and this will be receiving and they can receive at the same time. But there's a great but and that but is that the station beacons must re, uh, transmit already uh, frequencies, different frequencies, different ultrasonic frequencies. This is why we have different ultrasonic frequencies like 19 kilohertz, 25 kilohertz, 31 kilohertz, kilohertz, uh, for, uh, 45 kilohertz, 37. So currently we have up to five frequencies and you cannot have in the same submap the same frequencies because uh, the mobile beacon is, wouldn't be able to distinguish the ultrasonic signal coming from which, uh, from which on, of the stationary uh, beacons. Um, the great benefit of universal architecture is that you may have many mobile beacons without update rate reduction. That's great. But at the same time, the complexity of the system increased significantly. Again, 10 times more, uh, more complex than non universe architecture because the mobile beacon must be able to receive at the same time different ultrasonic frequency. They are pretty close to each other, filter them, detect the signal, and still would be able, in terms of external noise and in terms of interference and all those things, would be able to calculate its own position. Because in this case, the mobile beacon is calculating its own position, not the modem. So it means that inverse architecture system is more scalable. Uh, and uh, again, update rate reduction uh, is slow or no at all uh, when you increase the number of mobile beacons. What is the drawback of the inverse architecture? Since the mobile beacon is receiving ultrasound, you cannot place the mobile beacon on something noisy like a drone. Uh, because the drone is emitting ultrasound, or let's say sound in very wide, uh, nearly white type uh, noise, uh, which is going from audible to ultrasound range as well. And uh, it would be simply blocking the reception of ultrasound from station beacons. So it means that instead of 30 meters, the maximum distance would be reduced to 20 to 10. In case of very noisy drone, it could be reduced up to five meters, for example. So we do not recommend to, inverse, uh, to use inverse architecture in case of drone or any kind of noisy mobile object. And we always recommend to use it when you have multiple uh, mobile objects, like people tracking, for example, or multiple robots or multiple forklifts, many, means more than five, 10, those kind of things. And update rate, uh, uh, is, is important. So if, if, if you are okay with update rate one per 10 seconds, then non, sorry, then non inverse architecture is good enough as well. But if you need, for example, 10 Hertz update rate per mobile beacon, then in this case, inverse architecture is your solution. Uh, so once again, let me repeat the, the summary between, uh, differences and benefits and pros and cons between non inverse and, and inverse. We support both. Both systems support up to 250 beacons, station plus mobile combined. Inverse architecture is mainly used when you have multiple mobile objects like people, and when location update rate is important for you. Non-inverse architecture is used when you have noisy mobile objects like drones. In this case, non-inverse architecture is your choice. Uh, then let's talk about a bit about submaps. We will be having a separate video on this. Uh, but in terms of submaps and in terms of this architecture building, both architectures are the same. So if you want to have 2D tracking of a robot or of a person, you could employ non-inverse architecture or inverse architecture, but you uh, still build more or less the same. For example, for the 2D tracking, this is one room, another room, third room, etc., etc. In each room, you need to have at least two stationary beacon, any, in any configuration. And then, of course, the mobile beacon th that would be moving from one to another. The difference uh, in terms of submaps is a complexity because when you you build non-universe architecture, each of these beacons 
is working the same frequency. Our default fre fre frequency is 31 kilohertz. But if you have uh, inverse architecture, you cannot have the same frequency. So it means that uh, the network planning is a bit more complex. We will be describing it more and teaching a bit more, uh, but overall logic is the same. So for example, you have one room, you have 19 and 25. In this room, you must also have different frequencies, but you cannot use the same 1925. You must use 31 and 37, for example, because otherwise, when there will be handover between submap 5 and submap 4, uh, the system would, you know, wouldn't be able to do the handover because the frequencies are the same. So the neighboring submaps cannot have the same ultrasonic frequencies. Uh, in this case, this already can do. Uh, the same frequencies, but there is another complexity. We will talk about this different uh, in different video in a bit more details. But remember that uh, you can build submaps and larger maps with up to 250 submaps, submaps in both inverse architecture and non-inverse architecture. So from this perspective, like capacity and capabilities overall, systems are the same. But there is a fundamental difference in terms of ultrasonic working. Uh, and so you can build as large uh, and as complex maps consisting of up to 250 submaps in, uh, from both inverse architecture and non-inverse architecture. As usually, if you have additional questions, please ask. Uh, send us an email to info at and we will be happy to help. Thank you.